Follow these three simple steps and you're guaranteed to make it into the UFC. Of course, I'm just joking. I'm going to give you guys tips and tricks on how I got to the UFCs and the pitfalls and the mistakes that I've seen plenty of people make. I've been doing this for a pretty long time. Oh, that guillotine? It's, that's oh, that's it. pretty tight, guys. It, it's in, guys. That's it. There he is in 30 seconds. And I've kind of seen the same similarities when it comes to the people that are successful and the same similarities with the people that kind of mess up along the way. With any goal, I feel like there are certain things that are non-negotiables. And when it comes to chasing a career like mixed martial arts or trying to get to the USC, which is the highest level of mixed martial arts, there are some non-negotiables that you need to actually get in. These are your entrances into the door. Some people believe that these kind of things are like special traits. They're like, oh, these guys possess this stuff but for me i personally believe these are your car to access your dreams if you don't have these better off not trying or you're better off pursuing something else first thing that i'm gonna say number one is gonna be the desire and that goes for anything anything that you want to do you have to make sure you're the one that wants it you can't let somebody talk you into want to pursue being a mixed martial artist want to pursue getting to the ufc the desire have to come from yourself now it doesn't matter what the motivation is if it could be money if it could be um changing your family's life even if it's fame to be honest as long as the desire is there you're golden number two i'm gonna say is faith you have to believe that it's possible if you're chasing any dreams and in the back of your head and you're constantly talking negative to yourself and you don't believe that you can actually achieve it you're just wasting your own time you're better off going to school figuring something else out and number three and what i think is the most important thing that you need is work ethic this is the one that i always see people talk about as if it's some type of special ability like oh this guy works hard and this guy shows up on time blah 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 but what i honestly believe a work ethic is a non-negotiable you have to show up on time you have to be able to work hard all of this is stuff that people at the top of the top all have in common they all had a good work ethic the only way you're going to get by without work ethic is if your talent is just so insanely out of this world that you're going to be able to succeed at anything you try but for us regular folk work ethic is the biggest non-negotiable now along the way i do believe there are things that are special traits these are the things that aren't non-negotiable but will help you drastically in your career if you have them. Number one is athleticism. Believe it or not, there are a lot of guys that get by in their career where lack of skill and lack of understanding, but they are athletic enough to make magical things happen. Knockouts, submissions. If you're athletic enough, you could catch people that aren't as athletic as you just because you're a little bit faster or a little bit stronger than them. Number two will be your spatial intelligence. That's one of the things that people don't understand enough when it comes to fighting or martial arts in general. Spatial intelligence plays a big part, especially when when it comes to defense or just the ability to learn most of the things you're going to be learning in martial arts of course you're going to feel it but you have to be able to just see a technique and be able to understand it through spatial intelligence and when it comes to striking that's what's going to give you your visual keys for defense and your visual keys for offense the next thing that will help you is your ability to be able to drill the ability to be able to do the same movement over and over and over again without checking out or being bored and that's one of those things that will just offset your lack of spatial intelligence if you're somebody that doesn't react well to visual cues if you drill it enough your mu muscle memory will be there for when it's time to execute your techniques and the last thing that i will say will really really help you out in the long run obviously is talent that goes for any field that you're trying to be if you're talented enough you can kind of throw a lot of these other things out the window like i said if you're born with a god-given talent that's just over the moon you can even like, ignore some non-negotiables now with all those prerequisites out the way you can actually focus on building a career the easiest part of this journey should always be training so that means if you have all the prerequisites from before training would never be difficult to you if it's something that you love if it's something that you desire if you have the faith that you could accomplish it if you have a work ethic training is always going to be the easiest part so that means you have to also make it easy for yourself finding the right gym finding the right coaches finding the right trainer partners make sure you get all that figured out right at the beginning if you find somewhere where you fit start a routine and try your best not to break this routine if your routine is I can only train five times a week or your routine is I can only train one hour a week of course I'm over exaggerating but you have to maximize that time that you're on the mat all right if you can only train one hour a week and you spend five minutes being late now you turn your one hour into 55 minutes so that's what I always mean when I say maximize your mat time and maximize your 100% hour a week is your 100% you have to make that work for you but realistically you're probably gonna be training five six times a week especially if this is what you want to do for your career since training should be the easiest part of all of this what you have to watch out for now are the difficulties and those are all going to be from outside sources not having enough time to spend with your friends and family
family and not having enough money. Depending on the type of lifestyle that you live, the friends and family part might not be a big factor to you, but the money is a big factor to everybody. So I always say make good financial decisions. One of the first ones that helped me along the way, and I still do it to this day, is cutting down bills as much as possible. A common mistake that I see with young fighters or young athletes coming into the gym is they have too many bills on their hands to where they have to work a certain amount of hours and that work time is also taking away time from them training. A huge hack that I learned from the get-go is get rid of car notes. Car notes is one of those biggest things where you got to pay it all the time. So one of the things I always tell the younger fighters at, at my gym is, hey, if you could buy a car outright on an auction or you go to Facebook Marketplace, something like that will really help you out. You have to be humble enough to drive something that's not so fancy and not so good looking until you make it, but it'll pay off in the long run. Nowadays, everybody wants to flex. Everybody wants to look like they got it before they got it, but you have to be humble enough to actually get there and then you can show that you got it. Along with that financial decision, now you need to find a job that's flexible enough for you to be able to train. A lot of fighters and a lot of up and coming athletes, they usually do like Ubers or Lyft and things like that. Things where they're making their own schedule. For me personally, I was working at the same gym that I trained at. It was one of the best situations I could find for myself. I was working in the kids program. So as soon as I was done training, I'll go right to the kids or whenever I needed more time to train or I was preparing for a fight, they understood because we're all in the same place. If that's a situation you could find yourself in where you're actually working at your martial arts academy, I say go for it. But if you can't find a job where you're making decent money, but you could also work flexible hours. And now it's time to actually get to the career part. My best advice when you're first starting is to take your time. And the amateurs, take your time. Don't be in such a hurry to make money. A lot of people want to turn professionals because they see, oh, okay, I'm going to start getting paid now. I understand the amateurs can seem a little bit boring. I felt like I took a lot of times in the amateur, but it will pay off. Now that I'm in the UFC, believe it or not, sometimes I think to myself, okay, maybe I should have done a little bit more as an amateur. Gain as much experience as possible because experience is key. The higher level you get, what's going to matter is that ring time. So try to get as much as you can while you're in the amateur. Take tough fights, take different sports. Don't be so focused on MMA. You can take boxing fights. You can take jujitsu fights. You can do whatever you want. Just gain as much experience as possible because at the highest level, that experience matters. Also, don't be so focused on the results. And the amateur level, nobody's going to care what your amateur record was once you turn pro. You could be 100 and 0 as an amateur. If you start off 0 and 5 as a pro, your career is over, you know? So take your time. Take those losses. They're important. Me personally, my first loss was as a professional, you know? If I had gone through that loss as an amateur first, I would have had a better time dealing with it. Even though it wasn't that bad for me, I know people that lose one time and they can never come back from it. So take those losses as an amateur. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to remember. If anybody is Googling your record as an amateur, they need to get a life, okay? And once you feel like you've gained enough experience in the amateurs, then you can start talking to your coach about turning pro. It's very important that you get your coach's advice before you turn pro. You don't want to throw yourself out there to the wolves just because you feel like you're ready. Of course, it's great that you have faith in yourself. The coach is to reel you back in when you're <laughs> going too far, you know? There's nothing wrong with self-belief. Like I said, it's one of the non-negotiables. You got to have faith. But your coach's job is to stop you from making careless mistakes. And that goes into the next one is to, to take calculated risks once you get to the professional level. What I mean by that is don't make your first fight in the 20 and old guy from Dagestan, you know? <laughs> like, I understand we want to satisfy that ego that I'm not scared of anybody, I'll fight anybody. That's all well and good, but this is a career. It's not a tough guy contest. You got into this to be a prize fighter, okay? You didn't, if you wanted to just fight, you'll be out there on the streets just fighting people for free. You want to be a prize fighter, you got to take calculated risks for your future. And that doesn't mean padding your records until you get to the big stage, because you're only setting yourself up for failure. I've seen people do that in the past. They get to the big stage and crumble in two or three fights and then they're not fighting anymore. Take calculated risks as in picking the right type of opponent at the right time. You know, if you're just starting, if it's your debut, you should probably be fighting somebody that's close to the similar experience. And as you're advancing your career and your coaches start seeing that, okay, this guy's ready, this guy's ready, you start looking for regional titles. Once you get a regional title, that's when the UFC starts paying attention to you. There are plenty of big regional titles, LFA, Bellator, 
can get a cage the ffc all of these are shows that are constantly getting people into the ufc if you could get a belt from one of those shows most likely the ufc is going to pick you up the most important thing you could do for yourself at this point in your career is to always be ready for opportunities there's so many fights going on in the ufc people are constantly getting injured this is a hard sport to prepare for and people are always falling out an opportunity could present itself at the most random time and that includes things like regulating your weight always being in shape never know the ufc might call and say hey we need somebody to step in to fight in a week's notice if you're the local champ they're probably gonna look at you first or if you're somebody that's relatively good they're gonna call you up if you're not in shape or you can't make weight that's a missed opportunity so it's good to prioritize those things because you never know what can happen one day you're sitting at home the next day you might be fighting for a world title and i know these things sound simple but most things in life are simple it's just the implication that's usually difficult. A lot of simple things aren't necessarily easy, but as long as you're consistent, you're gonna find yourself in a better place than somebody who's not. And I'll end it with this. This is something that anybody that's successful in any venture will tell you. Sooner or later, luck is gonna play a huge part in your success, but you can maximize your chance of getting lucky as long as you're prepared. So stay focused, stay consistent, and you're gonna get there.